This AI video generator raised over $73 million in investors' funds. Now, normally I don't review every AI tool I come across simply because of the fact that most of them are the same and they don't really have any distinguishing features. But after I saw the amount of hefty money that was put into building the Luma Labs dream machine, I had to check this out. Hey everyone, if you're joining me for the first time, my name is Josh Mountain. I'm a software engineer, entrepreneur, and YouTuber. And today we're gonna to be taking a comprehensive look at the Luma Labs dream machine, another AI video generation tool released by Luma Labs. Now in the past on this channel, I've taken a look at both Sora and Pika.art, two other AI video models that have meant to do the exact same thing that the Luma Labs dream machine is trying to do, make realistic, high quality videos that greatly reduce the time it actually takes takes to make videos and also greatly reduce the amount of people required to make videos as well. Now, as a former videographer, this kind of scares me a bit. I mean, when ChatGPT first came out, I was okay with using it. And then when the pictures came out, I was okay with using it. But now seeing how far the actual video technology has come, it's starting to worry me a little bit. Today, we're gonna be looking at how exactly this compares to OpenAI Sora, Pika.art, and other video AI tools that I've reviewed in the past and seeing just how well it stands on its own. Is the Luma Labs Dream Machine worth the $73 million worth of investor funds that went into building this tool? Well, today we're gonna to find out. Oh boy, so this is Dream Machine. As it says right there, we have tons of images. Oh, I like that if I hover over this. Entirely AI generated images. Now with every sort of AI generated image, there is a certain uncanny valley feeling to it. And if you're not familiar with that concept, it basically works out to be this. It's something that looks human, but it's not human enough to the point where you're comfortable. In essence, you can look at all these videos and know right off the bat that they are created by AI. But in this case, look at this fiery thing with the two people holding hands. I wouldn't really know at first glance that that was created by AI. In other videos, it's much easier to tell. Obviously that woman doesn't look real, neither does this woman, or does she? Well, that's the secret. While not all AI videos live up to being as realistic as they could possibly be, there are certainly videos that can be generated that actually do blend the line between what is a real video and an AI generated video. So much so to the point where much as in the past, we've had AI pictures and real life pictures compared and people try and guess which is which, we are now having video guessing competitions. People don't know what the difference between an actual real life video that was filmed with a real camera and real light and real everything versus something that somebody just typed into AI and created in a matter of seconds. But let's get into it. Dream Machine here says it has new freedoms of imagination. Dream Machine is an AI model that makes high quality realistic videos fast from text and images. Highly scalable, high quality video and text. And although this does look great, a lot of stuff could more so be used in a Love, Death of Robots episode than actually used to replace real life production crews. So I'm gonna push it to the test today, trying out different styles and models to actually see how this actually stacks up to just filming videos in real life and other AI video models that I've reviewed in the past. As we can see, it says iterate at the speed of thought. It's an incredibly fast video generator, 120 frames at 120 seconds, iterate faster, explore more ideas and dream bigger. And then of course they have all of their shots here, create action packed shots, dream worlds with consistent characters. That one's scary right there. The one of the, the woman dancing in front of the red background because that at first glance doesn't look like it was generated by AI. All these other ones, yeah, you could tell. But this one right here, at first glance, if that was just a B-roll in some TV commercial or something like that, well, I wouldn't know that that was generated by AI. And that's exactly the point. Now, automatically right off the bat, you get 30 free videos that you can create. And I've already created one here. I simply typed in a multicolored galaxy with alien ships flying around in saucers. And this is the video I got. Now, obviously very sci-fi, but that was the prompt that I put in. It seems like something that would be straight out of Star Trek, The Next Generation, or actually one of the older Star Trek movies and films and TV shows of that sort uh, with that older CGI. But I mean, hey, it isn't that bad. But what I'm curious to see here is can we push the limit of what is actually capable of being created using Luma AI? So a simple prompt I just created here is a realistic video of a dog and a skateboard wearing a bucket on its head so it cannot see where it is going. The dog does a jump off a ramp and lands safely. Very simple. And we're also gonna hit the enhance prompt box here. We'll hit send and in just a matter of seconds, as Luma AI says, we should have that video be created for us. As it says, 120 frames in 120 seconds. So here we go. A realistic video of a dog and a skateboard wearing a bucket on its head, created in less than a minute, it says. It says it's in queue. So we'll leave that for a second and come back here and I'll let you know exactly how long this took. 
Now, Luma AI have publicly stated that their mission is to empower creativity through the use of AI. And that's why their AI videos have come into effect. Other things that Luma AI has actually gone ahead and fully built out now is the ability to take any sort of image, any 2D image, and create a real 3D model in a matter of seconds. And it does a really good job at this, which I'll get to later in the video, because the ability for anybody to generate something like a game asset or a CGI, I mean, I'm not a CGI artist, but you know, CGI models is the word I'm looking for. Um, in a matter of seconds, using AI is something that has never been done before, has never been tried before. Um, and I really think the technology that people are building, not just with Luma AI, but also with every other video generator where they are gonna be sacrificing the time it takes for a person to do the work simply by having an AI model that's been trained to do what that person's job would have originally been. And here we go, our video is done. So a realistic video of a dog and a skateboard wearing a bucket on its head so it cannot see where it's going. The dog does jump off a ramp and lands safely. Bit of a more complex prompt here, but let's see what we got. Okay, it's a dog and a skateboard. He's not wearing a bucket on his head. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay. Now, obviously it does not look very real there, um, but the dog's on the skateboard and there, and there is a jump and there's a ramp and he just kind of morphs into the skateboard. So very interesting. Okay. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more of a simplified one here. We're going to adjust this prompt a little bit and we're going to say a video of a dog on a skateboard jumping off a ramp. So we're gonna simplify it just a little bit here. We'll submit that. A video of a dog and a skateboard jumping off a ramp. We're gonna see here exactly how this compares to the realistic video of a dog and a skateboard with my really long and complex prompt. But why the $73 million price tag? I mean, why are investors putting so much money into this? Well, the reason is because Luma AI is actually built in what is called multimodal transformer architecture, which I know sounds like something straight out of a science fiction or a Michael Bay movie, but it's actually a real thing. Essentially, it does and allows AI to do the one thing that provides AI the main source of its power, and that is understand and utilize context. Not only do these models have the ability to actually take text and image and use them, but it can do it at the same time sequentially in a much deeper understanding that takes natural language processing and elevates it to the next level. Now, if you're not familiar with AI and didn't really understand half the words I said there, all you need to understand is that it can allow AI to understand context much more efficiently. Because here's the thing, humans understand context of situations very, very well, but AI, not so much, which is why when ChatGPT was released, everything became so revolutionary because every AI on the planet prior to ChatGPT had been working with pretty much no context. It was a chatbot that was pulling information from the internet and just kind of throwing it all together and spitting it out back at you. But for the first time, we had a chatbot that actually could understand the context of a situation. And with that understanding in mind, other companies began looking at doing the same things the same way ChatGPT was, actually allowing AI to make better and more efficient decisions by understanding the context of situations. So with the $73 million in investments that have gone into building this application, does it stack up to the results that are being promised. Well, let's take a look at that next video that I just generated. Okay, very interesting. A video of a dog and a skateboard jumping off a ramp. Okay, so he's on the ramp and oh, oh, okay, he's skating. Oh, what the? Okay, a couple things here. I think momentarily he becomes the skateboard. Yep, no, he, he definitely, when he does the jump, he jumps off the ramp but then does a jump. But it also looks like he's he's on like a Hot Wheels track. Now, at this point, I should clarify, I didn't tell it to make a realistic video of a dog, hence the reason it's a cartoon. Whereas with the older version, I said a realistic video of a dog, and that's why I try to make it look much more realistic, where we morph through about five or six different dog breeds in the span of a couple seconds here. As the, It's like, oh, it goes from Beagle to Golden Retriever to like, there's a terrier in there and it just, just kind of cycles through them all. So obviously taking the technology and allowing it to create these videos in a way that makes the most sense. Now, obviously if you compare this to something like OpenAI Sora, which I've done previously in the past, this doesn't really stack up to where it's currently at. But OpenAI Sora doesn't have a public model for people to use. So perhaps the best videos that have been shown on OpenAI Sora are the best videos that their team have been able to create with many videos like this not being shown publicly until the application can actually make those videos that are as high quality as OpenAI is showing off. But that was with the prompts that we were generating ourselves. I mean, I was literally just typing what I wanted to see there. Now, we're gonna use one of Luma Lab's own integrated recommended prompts to see what kind of video it creates. Now, of the prompts that we've chosen so far, 
things like a multicolored galaxy, a realistic video of a dog, a video of a dog on a skateboard. All these things were things I just typed up, perhaps because I wasn't actually informed on how we were supposed to write these prompts. We weren't creating the right ones. Things weren't being written in the proper way or formal tonality or however the way that the model is meant to interpret that text. So we weren't getting the right results that we were expecting. But while it is fun to create these fun little videos here, we should address the elephant in the room. Many people have been talking about the fact that AI can ultimately replace people in the field of videography, movie production, TV production, all of those things when it comes to actually making visual media. But how can this AI tool, obviously in its infancy, be able to actually replace those people? Well, when it comes to any sort of application or job, there are things that require context. And now that AI has the ability to understand context, there are people who will simply become obsolete because if you have AI tools that can understand the context that a human normally has, well, for the first time ever, you actually have a more cost-effective way to create a movie at the same or even a higher level of quality and that's because you're not actually hiring as many people because you're using AI systems that are much more cheap and quick to produce these same types of content. We can already see this on YouTube where there is now a new checkbox when you upload a video that says, is there any AI footage in this video? It doesn't say that exactly, but it basically says, is there anything in this video that was not generated by a human that would lead people to believing that it was? Essentially checking to see if it's fake or generated by an AI. But now let's take a look at the video that it just generated using one of their prompts. Okay, an old lady laughing underwater wearing a scuba diving suit. Her expression denotes calm and happiness. Okay. This is what I mean by uncanny valley. When I talk about how it looks human, but it's not. That, that is obviously not a human. That is what we call a skinwalker. That is something that will steal you out of your bedroom window in the middle of the night, never to be seen from again. It's kind of terrifying, if, I, if I'm being honest. And that's one of the biggest problems I have with these AI video models that OpenAI Sora has addressed, but because I haven't actually had the opportunity to play around with it, I am in more so of a, I'll see it when I believe it sort of state. Many of these AI video tools are generating AI video that doesn't look 100% right. You can look at it and know that it's AI. And when we get to the state where it's gonna be seamless in that you won't be able to tell the AI video from a regular video, well, then we face an entirely new problem in that we're not gonna know what's real and what's not. The problem with the AI video right now is that we can tell what's real video and what's AI generated video. So putting it in any sort of medium isn't really a viable solution in the long term right now because the video just simply isn't of a high enough quality. But yet at the same time, it's paradoxical because when that eventually gets solved and AI video is seamless and you don't know what's real and what's not, there are gonna be so many people who lose their jobs because they're simply no longer needed anymore and it's gonna become increasingly harder to tell what is real and what isn't. It's completely paradoxical in that we wish we had AI videos that looked actually like real life, but if we had those AI videos, we would curse them because people would lose their jobs and there would be tons of videos that we wouldn't know if were real or fake. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, if I ever saw this swimming towards me, this would be more scary than a shark because at least with a shark, if you faced it head on and you know, at, at the last second had to, as a last resort, boop it snoot away, you could just do that. You could just do that. But with this, she's not wearing a mask. She's not wearing anything. She's laughing underwater. That's terrifying. But obviously, who am I to judge? Maybe I could have just been putting in the prompt wrong. Maybe I should have explicitly stated that the old lady should be wearing a mask while laughing underwater, providing it more context. But again, if the AI is supposed to be smart enough that it understands context, it should know that an old lady laughing underwater would not be an old lady laughing without a mask on underwater. Again, just a small nitty gritty detail, but again, this is the early stage, the infancy of these sort of projects. If we ever get to something like OpenAI Sora, then obviously we're gonna be at a place where we're all gonna be screwed because if those videos are gonna be what are consistently generated by users at scale, you're not gonna know what's real and what's not anymore. And the scariest part about the whole thing is that, well, people are using it. And the more people use it, the better the AI gets. You can see from this entire demonstration, there's been a banner on the top of the page that says, due to high demand, we are temporarily limiting free tiers to three generations a day. Paid tiers have priority in the queue and no daily limit. So there's a couple scenarios here. Either one, people are using it for free and maxing it out to three generations per day, thereby training the AI model more and more, or they're paying Luma AI, which means that Luma AI is actually making income off of this AI generation and their models are getting trained even more so than free users, more than three generations per day. As stands with the case, with pika.art, this is not in a place where I can see it being used at scale. It's obviously got a ways to go and the technology is very, very promising, but just isn't all the way there yet. 
compare this to something like OpenAI's Sora model, and Sora is absolutely insane at generating realistic videos and images. It still has small things like people disappearing into walls, but I can tell you, just based on what's been shown by OpenAI and how realistic the videos that are being created are, that is way better than this. So if they actually allow people to start using Sora and it creates videos at the level that they actually showed off, then companies like this, I don't know what they're gonna do. It's curious. I wonder how it's actually gonna play out because investors have put millions of dollars into OpenAI tools and millions of dollars into other tools like Luma Labs and Pika.art and all these different places to generate these AI video images and videos. But what does it mean? What does it turn out to be? What is the value that's being created here? At the end of the day, it's the cost savings associated with not having to pay people to make your videos. Simply typing in a prompt and getting the result you want. And that is where we leave off today. And if you're interested in watching those videos where I actually talk about the AI tools, you can check out my Sora video right here and you can check out my Pika.art video right here. So that's it for me. As always, my name is Josh Mountain and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.